Two of us rejoined the coastal path in St. Ives, right down at the harbour, and thought an awful lot about the wonderful artists associated with this place. Barbara Hepworth, Ben Nicholson, Terry Frost, Peter Lanyon, the potter Bernard Leach, and many people's favourite, mine too, the marvellous naive artist Alfred Wallace, lived a life of poverty and uh, neglect in terms of his art. Now, of course, it sells for millions. Alfred Wallace. I was pleased to stand outside his cottage. Morning, walking fans. We're just leaving, Andy and me, just leaving St. Ives. We're at St. Nicholas Chapel, perched upon what's called the island, overlooking one of the glorious St. Ives beaches. It's only 20 to 10 in the morning. Looking across, I think that's the Tate Gallery there, I think. Um, uh, and a graveyard up behind it, which is pleasantly ordered and uh, suitably giving all its residents a chance of uh, an eternal look at the, the beautiful sea. As we spin round to, I think it's called Clodgy Head over there. And that's where our walking's gonna be done in the next half an hour or so. Looking out at this glorious blue sea. And uh, once we go beyond that headland, it's, it's rugged and it's remote and isolated. Pretty perfect for Monday, September the 19th. 2022 and I have to say there's quite a few folk out and about already. Well this is a day of rigorous walking as we dodge from one side to the other of the Land's End granite and its boundary with the hard dark metamorphic rocks which it abate when the magma was intruded into this incredible bit of crust. Fantastic day's walking lay ahead. Uh, making our way from St. Ives to close to Pendeen. We're actually not going all the way to Pendeen and the lighthouse. We're just going to deviate off the uh, track before we get to Pendeen and pick up Andy's car. So a walk of about, I don't know, 12 miles or so today. And it is awe-inspiring. Um, after the relatively benign day yesterday, walking from or all the way around St. Ives Bay, this is a level up. And uh, just be careful here, I'm crossing a little brook, a little burn, whatever the Cornish word for it is. And it's, it's uneven underfoot, uh, rocks, mud, granite boulders, tours, and the ever-present dramatic coastline with a, a, a tur turquoise blue, and green iridescent sea below us. Uh, a little bit of uphill to, to navigate here. And it is, it is the perfect place to come and commune with nature. And I think one of the things you've got to bear in mind on a day like this is that fundamentally we're all equal. Every single person out here on the path so far, we've gone past four, two runners, Two, um, two women walkers, uh, a solo man. There's a few more up ahead. And everybody out here is equal. We're all doing the same thing. We'll have the same opportunity to do it. We're plowing our own little individual furrows as we walk along. And that seems to me to be so apt today. Uh, it makes me think about the, about the humanity of us all. We're all basically the same. And we should all treat one another the way we would wish to be treated ourselves. And you'll all be well aware of what I would only describe as an orgiastic melodrama of mourning, which is, indicates to me that what this country, specifically England, it's not the whole of the United Kingdom for sure, and it certainly isn't me, the whole, whole set of nations needs the equivalent of counselling. So we are above Porth, Gassic, Rock and Cove and the memorably named headland just in front of us, this is our coffee break by the way, and he's just sorted out my bra strap on my uh, heart monitor, which I'm utterly delighted about because I was struggling with it. 
But the highlight of our coffee stop this morning is, is this headland, which is named Pen Ennis. I'd like you walking fans to say that quickly and you'll get my point. Well, 300 and a bit feet above sea level and uh, we're approaching one of my favorite things because of what it represents, a trig point. We're above Treviga Cliff or Treviga and uh, this marks a local high point used in the triangulation of Britain which was started in the 1800s. There's a, that's where you fix the old theodolite onto. That feature there, you screwed it in and leveled it up and took your bearings from this point, um, which is pretty much from here. Everywhere is either east, north or south. There's no west because that west stops there. We literally are at walking along the coastline of Land's End, uh, which is about, I don't know, 15 miles away from us now. Uh, we're walking on in this direction. And uh, we've had no, no comments from Mr. D. Oh, fuck it up. <laughs> fuck. Well, I think that was highly hilarious, as long as you're not hurt. I'm not hurt, I just got a bowl up my ass. <laughs> yeah, it's like, technical malfunction in the filming process there. Walking fans, if you could come round this way a bit, Andy, because you're in silhouette. I think you were trying to do a uh, Prince William. You wanted to know what the experience he's been having lately was. Ladies of Pude. I've just pegged myself. With a pole. This is on film, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. So and it will be broadcast. Oops. To all walking fans. You've corrupted me in the months that we've been together doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts about the gloriousness of today? Absolutely stunning. Hard work because we haven't been doing it for a while. Back in the groove and enjoying it. Thoroughly. Yeah. Great. I think both of us think more people out today than you would normally expect on a leg like this. Uh, and we've got our first northbound walker coming. Everybody's been going the same way as us so far. And here's our first crossover character coming. So that's. that's uh, my count between coffee time and lunchtime is now three. And I'm glad that your uh, gymnastics took place without him. Yes, it was a bit of a technical error there in terms of walking. I fell I'm over. Trying to do two things. Much babbling here as this little brook wends its way down to River Cove, imaginatively named, on this glorious stretch of Cornish coast to the south and west of St. Ives. Beautifully remote, and look at that for a stunning little bridge. A couple of whacking great slabs of granite. So appropriate, so fitting, so majestic. I'm not gonna walk over them. Yeah, fairly steep climb up the other side of the valley. Marvellous. He's just correctly pointed out a spot of uh, amazing horticulture. Look at the size of that fucking rhubarb. That is over human height tall. So, quite a crumble. Oh, it's rigorous today. Bloody marvellous, one of really rugged, one of the most rugged we've done. In fact, I think some of the most difficult to walk over terrain. That's the only bench so far. That was a random surprise in memory of somebody. Uh, somebody Baker, 1917 to 84. Author, editor and seafarer. Well, that's rather nice. Uh, but, uh, well, it's nothing but glorious, this. Um, rugged, isolated, hard going, uh, and requires as you can see, some specialist equipment, I think. Uh, the bandana's made its first appearance on this trip, as of these, my poles of walking. Uh, sorry, bad camera work there, walking fans. But yeah, bandana man's back in action uh, for perspiration management purposes into the glasses. 
helps an awful lot. A little bit of toasty skin from yesterday on my forehead and upper uh, tonsorial area. But what a way to escape. What a way to escape from all the nonsense that this insane country is inflicting upon itself. And uh, this is the place to be. Cornwall, cliffs, sea, ponytail. That's another item of equipment that's come into play today. Anyway, walking fans, I'll update you later on. We're, we're, I don't know, eight, nine miles into this walk. Done more than we've got left to do. At, uh, absolutely exhilarating. Not to mention bloody knackering. <laughs> this is a sort of sign that utterly exasperates me. It's just warning, don't, do not, do not. A series of bossy instructions. Uh, and nothing on there saying, enjoy the beauty of this landscape and fuck off with your private property. It belongs to all of us. The coastal path took us between rocky cairns, which you had to scramble over, and we looked down often on narrow inlets, which locally are known as zawns, Z-A-W-N. To our left, ancient fields. All around us, disused copper and tin mines. Occasionally we saw an adit, an opening into the ground, which uh, miners would have once hacked out and worked their way like subterranean moles into the innards of this wonderful landscape. In time, we reached the jagged grandeur of Gurnard Head, a fish I like very much and had rarely in my life, and we knew at this point that we were near Walk's End. We looked down on the enchanting Portmere Cove and uh, prepared ourselves for the final slog back up to the car. A late afternoon to you, walking fans. Very much in the business end of today's walk, and boy, it's been a full-on experience. Without a shadow of doubt, the toughest underfoot conditions we've had. And we've done, this is our 32nd day. Uh, a few of the walks have been half-day walks, but 32nd day, 32nd walk on the mighty SWCP between the gloriously handsome and bijou seaside resort of St. Ives. And uh, we're well on the way to uh, to a place called Pendeen. We're not going quite as far as that because we've got the car parked, Andy's car, parked in a cunning little car park away to our left at the moment, uphill. Uh, but it's been, and by quite a long shot, and we've, we've done a lot of walking, um, very rough terrain, all granite, big boulders, and uh, you've got to kind of scramble over them most of the time, so, Really, really uh, tricky, a bit like sort of high hurdling on an uneven surface repeatedly and going up and downhill. So a fantastic physical challenge. Uh, we're both, you know, at our, at our uh, walking peak doing this. And although we're gonna be tired in the morning, I'm sure, sense of achievement Oh, it's going to be off the, off the scale doing a day like this. So not much more to do. Yeah, not much more to do. Uh, and it seems such a perfect thing to do on a day like this to be in touch with your own physicality. And more importantly than that, your own, your, your, your spiritual side. The, that part of you which sit where, where joy sits. In your brain, obviously, but joy and happiness and achievement and being surrounded by nature in all its glory and meeting like-minded like -minded folk uh, and having, as we've had some great interactions today with a lot of people, married couples, solo walkers, a lot of women solo walkers, which is great, a lot of dogs, um, really pleasurably uplifting and uh, as I say, like-minded folk and uh, it's helped me deal with avoiding the insanity that's been enveloping this country for 
well, for decades really, but more so in the last 10, 20 years of my life than ever before. And the epitome of it is, it is the, the uh, complete antithesis in this last few days of keep calm and carry on. Uh, feels to me like it's go mad and go over the top and, and, it, and be self-indulgent. Uh, in, in respect of what? A bunch of thieves. Thieves of property, wealth. Uh, in many respects, their own self-respect. They act, act like the worst kind of fop from the Regency period in the 18th century. Uh, as best characterised by Hugh Laurie in um, one of the Blackadders. So, preposterous rituals, all made up, most of them since the Victorian period, and many of them made up for this uh, monstrous spectacle and grotesque waste of money that's taken place. Um, out of all proportion, and I do think many folk need to wake up and smell the roses and realise what is being done repeatedly by this elite aristocracy of ours. And uh, I haven't got enough time to, to riff on about that. I just wanted to get it kind of off my chest and hope that more people realise the absurdity of the situation and uh, turn against the current status quo. Alas, like with many things, I see no prospect of leadership from the Labour Party on this. Very little from the Liberal Dems. Possibly the Greens will have a grown-up view of what a modern, mature, democratic country should be doing in terms of loyalty. We shall see. Oh, walking fans, no question about my rant for the day today and what its topic was. It was a brilliant day's walking and uh, over this incredibly hard rock, we were so glad to get back to the cars and uppermost in my mind, song for the day, had to be a hard rock song, could only be Ace of Spades by Motorhead. <laughs>